Our guest this morning in the Sports Corner is a longtime friend, someone that I've known for a very long time when it comes to the game of basketball, and she's making her second appearance at Manhattan College in Riverdale, and we wanted to welcome her back, even though I don't think I've ever called you Coach Marsh, Sammy. Uh, I don't know if um, if that's ever come up. I mean, for me, over the years, you've either been Sammy, Sam, Ball Girl, um, uh, Samara, but ne never, never Coach Marsh. No, I don't think so either, Bobby. And today I got caught in the moment because I couldn't remember your last name. It took me a second. To it's, it's okay. I, it's a tough one to say. It's a lot easier to just go with with Bobby C. So I appreciate you taking some time with us here this morning. Congratulations on coming back to Manhattan. I'm excited to see you there. Thank you. I am too. Uh, this second time around actually is really personal. And uh, it is close to home now that I'm back in the Bronx and coaching. Um, the MAC is an excellent league. And so I'm really enjoying this first uh, two months on the job. You know, Sam, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, being a Bronx native, I think it's always great when you could say that you're getting a chance to come home and have an impact in your community. And, you know, for you, someone that loves the game of basketball, I mean, so many times we've spent so many years having so many conversations about about different uh, levels of the game, whether it's the NBA, the WNBA, college basketball, and I know how much you love the game. You're a communications major, so it's also great to have you on the show because I know how much you love to talk the game. And I feel like these days, your whole life is spent recruiting. That's a big part of being the new assistant coach at Manhattan and even in the former positions that you've had in different places. So tell me a little bit about the recruiting aspect and specifically what it's like to be recruiting again for your hometown, Manhattan Jaspers. I think for me, it's, it's truly awesome to be able to say that I played at a Bronx high school, uh, went to school in the uh, New York metropolitan area, and then now I can help another young talent come to school in the same area or even from the same borough. Uh, we have a Bronx side on our roster, which is always awesome. So I love when that's a, a, a part of the, the deal and that comes with it. Um, and then as a recruiter, I'm always constantly looking for new and upcoming talent from around the five boroughs, but particularly keeping an eye on Bronx talent. Um, there's also international recruiting and there's also transfer portal recruiting, which to me opens up even more doors to meet more talent, more players and um, to bring some local players back home. So, Coach, um... When you had your uh, first stint at Manhattan, actually pretty cool stat here. It was the fourth largest turnaround for that women's basketball program in that first stint. And you recruited a player at the time that was in the top 100 in the ESPN rankings, which might not seem like a big deal. But when you're talking about, you know, metro area basketball and trying to have some of these uh, local teams, you know, continue to raise the profile anytime you can have that top 100 top 50 player it's a it's an impactful player so speak specifically about about uh, recruiting at that time and what has changed ever since well you want to know something it was a glimpse into the future that player was actually a transfer so to now see that the transfer portal has become such a huge part of the recruiting process there were coaches and programs uh dipping into transfers back then um, just in a different way. You had, the, you had to have permission to contact from the previous school. Most of the time, the player was reaching out to you because they had a previous relationship or you recruited them before they went to their previous school. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's grand uh, to be a part of that, um, to say that that player made an impact after joining the program and then watching them go on and graduate. I think growth for me is the best part of the entire process, the growth of the players and then my own individual growth. And Sam, your journey pretty much starts out at your alma mater, uh, St. Peter's, uh, like we mentioned, communications major, and then you end up coaching for your alma mater. And that's pretty much how, you know, we make the leap in terms of the college and coaching ranks. And you've had a lot of stops in a lot of different places. It seems like you've had an impact in every single place that you've been. So that's got to feel good. Yes, it does, Bobby. Um, I can't deny I have memories from every single place. And nowadays, when I see a photograph or a social media post, it, the memories come flooding back. Um, I can say now I've coached long enough that athletes are getting married now or becoming coaches themselves. So this is kind of a funny time warp I'm in right now. So, all right, so let's kind of backtrack a little bit and do like almost like a, a recap here of the resume. So we're at St. Peter's and it ends up leading to, I mean, to me, this might have been 
the first place that you and I intersected in terms of the college ranks, because I get a chance to work with you as the former voice of the Monroe Mustangs. Uh, got a chance to work uh, with you at Monroe, which, of course, for our fans at, at home, you have locations in the Bronx, but also a campus in uh, nearby New Rochelle, which is not far from the BX. And that program goes on to have a tremendous amount of success, both the men and women at the time, but you were coaching on the women's side. And just uh, kind of, you know, we speak about stats before the Mustangs under your mentorship at the time, two national championships, the MVPs, most valuable players, getting to the uh, championship games, big deal Four all Americans four region 15 players of the year, three and Jack top 40 all stars and an academic an academic all America honor at the time. So in all uh, Sam, 14 players ended up signing with uh, NCAA division one programs. Is that, is that the right stat? That's what I, that's what I had it marked down as 14 players. Yes, um, and I can even give you an even better stat. The first national championship team, 2010-2011, at the D2 level, um, NJCAA, all of those players were from the New York area. They were either from the PSAL or the CHSAA. So they were all five boroughs players, which was truly special to me. Um, so there were kids from the Bronx on that team as well. Well, they're young women now. So, But that was an amazing uh team to be a part of yeah, of course. Um, my first year on staff and we we run the table we go the distance um and then we ended up repeating the very next season so that was definitely something I'll never forget yeah definitely some great moments I mean uh, some great players some great championship games and you know for you it ends up being part like I said of, of your legacy now I would say coaching and being here in the Bronx and and, and making moves because now we go from uh, Monroe and then later on uh, stops at LIU Brooklyn, where you've had an impact here in, in the in the New York City area. And then, of course, uh, after that, Delaware State and most recently Wagner. Yes. Uh, I think I pretty much lived in every area code or coached in every area code. I might have one borough left to hit um, before I could say I've done it all. Um, but in, in that time, I've got to work with some amazing people um, as far as the head coaches I worked for um, and the assistant coaches, my fellow colleagues. Um, I've experienced a tremendous growth. Um, I can't tell you how much better I am as a leader, uh, as a, and a mentor, and as well as on the sidelines with the uh, clipboard and growth in that area. Um, I think that all speaks to my entire uh, body of, of work around the five boroughs uh, and with my history in basketball. Um, I've been blessed. I've been around so many good players. Um, going back to my, my father's one of his best friends being Kareem Abdul-Jabbar um, and my awesome. dad being a Power Memorial graduate. Um, so I, I go from that as a kid and then um, my experience with Hoops and the Sun and then my college coaching career, I am, I can say I've seen a lot of basketball and a lot of great talent. So I, I have fun in this. I'm like a kid. I, I can't grow up. One of the things that you picked up for your resume uh, during during these last few years as being part of Coaches for Change organization. Talk a little bit about what that has meant to you and what kind of impact you've been able to make there. So I was actually invited into Coaches for Change by one of the board members, uh, a former Manhattan College uh, men's coaching player, uh, men's coach inside, Rasheen Davis. Um, so that for me was a, a way for me to give beyond the game, as you expressed, um, I think to me, basketball is the easiest part of what I do. I think helping young men and young women grow, have a voice, uh, be able to be uh, successful in their adult life. Um, to me, that's an even greater reward. Um, when you watch a player go from the recruiting stage, you coach them, you mentor them, and then they go into the world to live on their own and start their own family. I think one of the best things I can hold on to uh, and one of the things I do hold on to as a coach is that they're making it and they know what to do. They know how to live. And they can always, my, my phone is, is open. They can always call and reach back to see if they need anything. Uh, but again, going to join Coaches for Change was for me to be able to connect with even more coaches um, to be grow as mentors and leaders and as well as connect even better and stronger with the players that we were coaching. Um, I think the landscape politically lately has been very tumultuous. So it's important that we're able to discuss with our athletes and have an understanding of what's actually happening in the world and how each of us can make an impact individually. That was part one of our interview with Coach Marsh from the Manhattan Jaspers and women's basketball. Tune in next Friday for part two.